favorite game, Splody Horse. No, wait, that's not right. Disco Elysium, that's it. I remembered. It has been far too long since we chucked those poor gentlemen's steel ball into the sea with much fervor and with gusto. Both of them. Let's see where we were. Good morning. Nice to see you there. Ah, there's that art style I've missed so much. Collage? Yes, please. Perhaps later. Where were we? This, of all games, is not uh, tremendously good to spend a week between play sessions for, considering all the detecting details I need to keep inside my head. Recycle this bag. And my partner, Kim Kitsuragi. stones with the rain drip dropping upon them. All right. So my, my primary function, if I'm remembering correctly, is to get this poor, poor man, this poor corpse, out on the tree. I have attempted it once, and then sullied my shoes quite badly with sick. And the endurance check for it is still... Ooh! Ooh, it's up there. My, my percentages are low. Let's get a sip of coffee from the side of my mouth. Child, have you watched me become sick? Has this brought you joy? Fuck, does Kuhn okay? He doesn't care. The boy turns to you, and he doesn't care. I want to discuss the body with you again, Kuno. The body disgusts me. More questions about the crime scene. Uh, who is Kuno? I'm assuming. Um, <laughs> Kuno, I threw up, and I can't investigate the body. <laughs> Why are we bringing the child into this? I mean, I appreciate a shoulder to cry on. Thanks, Kuno. That's very sweet of you. Yeah, like a fucking volcano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking pathetic. Thank you. That means a lot. You were lucky you didn't die there. What did you call me? Hey, maybe you got some advice for me. I mean, you're obviously handling it quite well. It's true. It's a fair point. He's been chucking rocks at the corpse for hours now. But I do want to shout at the children. I do want to shout expletives. Uh, do, do you have any advice? Yeah. Kuno's got some advice for you. The kid looks to his left and then to his right and then leans toward you. I'm scared. What are you? Like, 80, right? Maybe you should stop embarrassing yourself in front of a fucking kid. Sound advice. Thank you, Kuno. Hmm. Perhaps you could compress this negative energy and turn it into some sort of a Kuno-fied non-vomiter. <laughs> Is that... Is that possible? Uh, what? Don't ask questions. Roll with it. It will work. I promise. Okay. I trust you, conceptualization. A kunified non-vomiter, here I come. That's right. Turn your weaknesses into conceptual strengths. Try it again now. Okay. Try, try the body again. Thanks, Kuno. Kuno doesn't fucking care! I, I love you anyway. Even if your parents don't. Oh, sick burn, Officer Kim. High five me. High five me. All right, body. I'm... Uh, what's the word? Invigorated. With the power of children making fun of me. And now I will... Steadfastly... There fade. he still is. Looking right through you. With his white eyes. The body below oh God, is entirely is so dedicated to that corpse smell. Emitting it is all it does now. 
All right, I get a plus one from the Kunoified non-vomiter. I have the ammonia. Why are my chances still so desperately low? That did, like, ungray it for me to attempt again, which I appreciate, but I'm, st I'm still going to need some, some sort of boost in my endurance. And this is like the first thing I need to do as a detective. It's a low bar, just getting the corpse down from the tree and... Mm. Alright, thanks, Kuno. Save my chances. Just in case we get another endurance boost somewhere. I can't really continue to fritter my points away into the endurance category. I'm sure it will come in handy. Let's give a quick save after I've been berated by the child. That'll be good for me. How are you today? I see in the chat. I am well. I was desperately hoping to stream yesterday. And it did not happen in my sea of editing. Which I regret to inform you has overlapped into today as well. But I'm almost done. I'm almost done with it. Much, much more importantly, how are you today? So, we were in the, uh, the middle of investigating the inn, or whatever I'm supposed to call it, the whirling in rags, and I did not speak to the bookshop attendant too much, nor have I investigated what seedy magazines they have for purchase. Let's do that now. This book has a rose, a pistol, and a half-naked dame on its cover. Now that's literature. She poured herself into a seamless dress. From the looks of it, she spilled some. On the cover stands a very muscular man, surrounded by flames. This is a book about pâté. Mmm. Delicious. Kim, come try this book. This book? You don't really understand what it's about, nor does it seem important. Why? It takes willpower to even read the author's name. Jan Kaus from Iguania. Hmm. Keep that name in mind. A book about Boyadero culture? It promotes freedom and roaming upstream like a salmon. Say it that way. Just because it's funny, I guess. I... And finally, a book about the future. The government reads your mind using radio technology. Well, it's not about the future, it's about the very present. Hmm. What have I? This book is titled Man from Heimdall and the Wildfire. Sexy. Thank you very much. I, too, hope the rest of the editing goes smoothly. I've got, like, 40 minutes. 40 minutes of editing. Which, in editing time dilation years, is, like, two hours. So it shouldn't be too bad. Okay. Madam Bookkeep. Hello again, sir. Hello, Annette. You see Annette sipping on her hot juice. She looks at you with shy amusement. I'm glad that I can amuse you, Annette. That's really all I've been put on this earth to do. Apparently trash the hotel room and amuse you. I don't care that you're not at school. That's none of my business. Uh, what is this crime business? What is romance? And who are these famous people? When we first met, she said got books about crime, books about romance, books about famous people. Uh, let's go through them. Crime fiction is about murders or burglaries or things like that, and the work of a policeman or a private detective who's trying to solve a crime and catch the criminals. Mm. That sounds right up my alley. It's not inappropriate to say. Wait, not crime fiction. I need to know what crime is, <laughs> as I remember nothing. Why would anyone want to read about crime? Okay, I get it. Crime murder gets the people going. Or is it crime murder gets the people going? 
I'm going to stick with crime murder. Gets the people going. I do. Please explain to me, in your, your own words, Annette, what is crime? Uh... She does not know what to say. It's that bad. Point to your head. <laughs> crime is what we were solving before this conversation began. Sorry, Kim. I know you're itching to go. Why would anyone want to read about crime? Yeah, okay, I get it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's kind of like a puzzle, too. You can guess who the criminal is, or how the good guys are going to catch him. That's what I'm guessing right now. In our own case, where there's a, a bloated corpse hanging in the backyard. A thought I keep having, which I guess can be, can be vocalized now, sure, is that my first instinct, as the detective assigned to the case, is to be like, Aha! I am justice! I'm Batman, and that, of course, I had nothing to do with the, the crime in question. But since we have such total amnesia, and cannot remember any of our past, it's entirely possible that I am the murderer. And until I can strike myself off the suspects list, I'm gonna sit right there on the list. Did you know, Annette, I am a policeman. I'm something of a policeman myself. You don't look much like a policeman. She examines you, as if to find something policeman-like. Aw, Annette. That warms my heart. Uh, what does a cop look like? Okay, then maybe I'm not a policeman. Should I stop being one? What does a cop look like? didn't mean to offend, sir. Sorry, sir. It's just that you don't look like Dick Mullen. She points to a book cover on which you see a strapping Vespertine officer. He stands grimly over the body of a dead woman. Oh, that poor woman. I used to be exactly like that Mullen guy, but then I decided to live a little in my bathtub, soaked with gin. You know, nobody actually looks like the guy in the picture. That's just a stupid fantasy of a man. It's not your body that's important in police work anyway. It's your point to your head. We've already just established that my head is completely useless in all of these scenarios, as I do not even know what crime is. So that's not a great avenue to go down. Wow, look at the guy. I'll never be as good as Mullen. Hmm, I had other questions. Um, there's no need to brag about my past life of abs and glossy hair. I'll just say, I'll never be as good as Mullen. I am sorry, cop, after Don't all. Don't say that. He's not even real. You're real. Aw, oh, Annette. You've struck right at the heart of me. I am shaken with emotions. That's right, I'm a real failure. <laughs> Overshadowed by a fake man. Now that's harsh. You know, I don't really want to deal with this. It's all too much. There's no need to double down on my sad sackitude. I don't want to put it back on her to say that's harsh. It's not her fault. I'm reading into it too much. And this just seems like the coward's way out, but I'll be a coward. I don't really want to deal with We can this. talk about something else if you want. Something nicer. That sounds great. Tell me, what is romance? An adult man, uh, disheveled and soaked with alcohol? Limping, walking up to a young lady in the street, saying, Hey, little girl, what is romance? Doesn't, isn't a great look? Not a great look for me, but I, I'm curious. It's the type of book where there's a rich lady, and she has to choose between the good man and the bad man. <laughs> it's true. She smiles at the thought, perhaps imagining herself in that situation. Oh, I hope you get to be rich and choosy one day, Annette. My dearest or that could you. be a story about a poor lady getting a rich man. It's about man and lady business, sir. Romance. It's about man and lady business. Put it on the cover. What about a poor man getting a rich lady? What about when both of the men are bad? That's most stories. What about when everyone is poor? What about a book where the man and lady business, wink wink, doesn't work out at all? Why, that's called science fiction. Now, that's enough romance for me. I had other questions. These are all such great dialogue options. I'm going to start about... What about when both of the men are bad? 
<laughs> I have a name. You over there with your rich man's lady business. Mm. Hello, hello. It is so nice to see you guys there. Good morning and welcome. Pardon the echo of me speaking into my coffee cup. Uh, what about when both of the men are back? These are not very common. You can't have a choice between bad and bad. Nobody wants to read a story like that. <laughs> what if it's written really well? Well, maybe then it's fine. Maybe if the lady then decides not to pick either, because she doesn't need a bad man. Yes, that would be interesting. That would be fascinating. What about a poor man getting a rich lady? And by getting a rich lady, what are, what are we saying exactly here? This seems to be in an arena of dialogue I'm not entirely comfortable with. But let's get that rich lady. It happens, but usually the guy gets rich in the process. Or should actually be rich himself, but has lost his family property unjustly. Like during the revolution or something. Ah, I see. Those are unhappy books for most of the pages. People sad about what they have lost, but then it all turns out just fine in the end. Mm, it's all just fine in my end. What about when everyone is poor? That's really not a proper romance story. That's more like everyday life. <laughs> the crushing reality of it. All right. Sometimes you have to write about real-life things. Yeah, poor people are boring. Sometimes you have to write about real-life things. Not in romance books, sir. These are about nice and pretty people, and everyone is happy in the end. Well, there go my chances. What about a book where the man and lady business, wink wink, doesn't work out at all? I haven't read many of those. Maybe you should ask Mum. Yeah? You think she has one about an excruciatingly painful breakup? <laughs> oh, you were referring to the limping comment. Not about your rich man's lady business. I see. I'm sorry. I misunderstood. I'm sorry you're limping. Are, are you okay? Do you need me to massage your... Never mind. But I will. I will, but never mind. This this seems a bit out, outside of Annette's wheelhouse. She's, she's just a young girl. I don't know if we want to bring up the prospect of excruciatingly painful breakups. But at the same time, the children must learn. The children must learn eventually, and it might as, we, might as well be from a gin-soaked stranger in the streets. I don't think it's a romance story if the main characters break up, though. She pauses. Trying to figure out the appropriate answer. Well, that's a very inappropriate question. No, no, think about it. One where they plunge into a torrid spiral of pain and recrimination, only it's really long and drawn out, scarred for life, phantom limb style. <laughs> you're, you're scaring the girl. Let's back off. Let's back off from this before she gets Sometimes frightened. Sometimes they break up for a little while, but then they always I'm get sure back together. Can. Annette is stronger than I. Alright, I got questions about, um... Maybe some about other books? Famous people. That's the one. Who are these so-called famous people? Oh, kings and queens and generals of old. Or artists and writers. Or musicians. Those kinds of people. There's usually something extraordinary about them. She scratches her cold, reddened cheek and then continues. I think that's why people read them to find the secrets of their fame. And steal it from them. Seems like most people who read those books fail to get more famous from reading them. That's, that's a good logical observation, yes. Reading those doesn't make the readers more famous, does it? But it does make the famous people more famous. <laughs> she smiles gleefully. Fame sounds delicious. Maybe someone will write a book about me one day. Mm, not the way you're going. No, not the way you're going, nameless detective. Fame is for vain people. I have better things to do. These famous people sound like a bunch of dorks. <laughs> that tickles me. It tickles me deeply. I don't want to be rude to the famous people. Especially not the musicians. Uh, maybe, maybe someone will write a book about me. One day? That'd, that'd be nice. Why would they do that, sir? Be 
because I'll be a superstar cop in the papers and everything. That'll show them. Hmm. Why indeed. I'm just an old, tired cop. What use am I? Sorry, cop. You're not that old. Maybe you'll do something really important. Something that wows the world. Wow, you think so? I want to thank her for those kind words, and I'm worried that if I say, Wow, you think so? I'm not going to get the chance to thank her later. So I'm going to go, thanks. You are very kind. She deserves to hear it. Yes, sir. She smiles and takes a sip from her vacuum bottle. I knew it! Soused on the job, Annette. Give me that bottle. All right, none of my business. Why well, she's not at school. Bye. Bye, Annette. You really brought me back my smile. I appreciate you. You're a gem in a world of tired coal. <laughs> Gift books and molten candy. Thanks, the sun. The display rack is brimming with worn paperbacks featuring an extremely muscular, sword-wielding barbarian on the cover. Nearly all the titles contain the word Hjelmdal somewhere. Hjelmdal. Storekeep, tell me about the Muscle Man books. <laughs> I, I have to. I must. Oh, Man from Hjelmdal. Pleasance. A very popular series of adventure novels. They're awfully immoral and violent books. Mm. Sounds right up my alley. Why are they so popular? She just answered that question. They're awfully immoral and violent books. Blood and violence, scantily clad women, epic narratives, all those mystical things he encounters. They're bound to grab those with little imagination and nothing to do. Ah, sounds good. Which one should I start with? <laughs> As a detective, that doesn't sound like something I'd be interested in. Except for the, you know, blood and violence and the scantily clad women and the epic narratives and all the mystical things he encounters. That sounds pretty neat. Well, which which one should what I start with? What does it matter? With? They're all the same. However, she rolls the customer the is always right, they say. She fiddles with her pendant. Hmm. Inspect the pendant. Oh, this isn't voice activated. Sorry. Never if mind. you're a novice of the series, I'd recommend Hjelmdalaman, the man from Hjelmdal. It's supposed to be a good introduction to the series. Soon may Hjelmdalaman come. Storekeep, look through the display books. Buy the Hjelmdalaman book for nine dollars, which I do not possess, or leave. Let's see what else she's got. It's a lovely little bookshop. Old sports magazines tucked away in a dark corner. Keep Biff Tannen away from those. The book collects the national recipes of Arda. They are all about lake trout. Mmm, as are we all. Who in their right mind wouldn't be all about that lake trout? What's this? You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. Well, that's mysterious. Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. I'm your new temp. And I've got to get to my paperwork. Thank you. I don't want to make plaisance upset at me. Examine the trinket. That shouldn't that shouldn't make her upset at me. I can also ask her what's behind the curtains. We'll start with examining the trinket. You see some kind of charm. An irregular polyhedron assembled from bones, sticks, and straw. Inside a disturbing fish head with empty eye sockets stares at you. I stare back. We fall in love. This is a traditional Seminese ward. Meant to provide protection against ill luck, bad dreams, curses, and other supernatural scourges. And, uh, who are the Seminese? Inhabitants of Ile de Fantôme, the Seminine Islands down south. They sound 
gorgeous. Ile de Fampon. Aside from poking at it suspiciously, there is nothing else to do with the fish head charm at this time. The curtains remain shut before you. Oh, shopkeep. Do, do satisfy my curiosity about what's behind these curtains. Do, do. Nothing. Now please go back to browsing the books. Don't you feel compelled to look at the books? The books are all you care about. Are you trying to hypnotize me? I mean, you're not wrong. The books are all I care about, but... I feel like you're a magician trying to pull a trick. Also, is your pendant of Semini's origin? I'm curious. She speaks almost as if she's trying to put a spell yeah. on you. No, I got urging that impression. you to buy more books. The books are all you care about. Oddly enough, the more she tries to draw you away from the curtains, the more alluring they become. Mm -hmm. I can practically see back there. I can see something. Shapes. I'm so curious. Ignore the curtains for now. Let's not create a big incident. Maybe I can distract her. Officer Kitsuragi, would you like to distract the woman? These shelves are overburdened with books from the same series. You see the name Dick Mullen over and over. Oh, storekeep, what's all this crime fiction? Oh, crime robberies, murders, even sexual crimes. We're fortunate to have twisting? Dick Mullen and his stories to sort all that out. Thanks, Dick Mullen. You're a, a police officer, apparently. You should buy all of these. They really do teach a person how to be a proper detective. I'd like to look through them, but I'm not sure if that's like... You have to buy them before you read. I don't know if I'm just looking at the titles or if I'm, I'm delving deeper. And I wish not to delve. Again, at the risk of angering plaisance. What else do we have? A quaint picture book brochure. Very colorful. It's a tome of fascist magic. Rather candid. The plaque on the shelf reads, to think. Biographies of Famous People. You see a large variety of names, none of which ring a bell. Do these bookshelves pull apart to reveal some sort of secret second floor? Love Den? I'm, I'm getting that strong impression. Anything of note on this shelf? I would say... Mm, the Greatest Innocence, yes, most certainly. It's an important educational tool, delving into the depths of history, religion, and their relation to innocentic power. Uh, who or what is innocence? A very influential historical figure. But surely I don't have to tell you that. You're a law officer, and law officers have at least some education. You know, you'd think so. But, uh, clearly you haven't met me. The book is also very daring. The author aims to re-examine the universal understandings of the innocentic system, creating a fresh vantage point and a shift in the tired order of things. God, what I wouldn't give for a shift in the tired order of things. So you recommend it? I thought it was about which of these innocences is the coolest and greatest. No, would you recommend it? Certainly. It's prudent for a person to have at least an elementary understanding of history and society. Imagine the chaos we'd be in otherwise. You feel like you should get this one. Definitely. It's important somehow. There's something personal inside. Hmm. I'm feeling... I'm feeling vibes from the books. I can actually afford it. It's pretty much the first thing I've come across that I can. And it's got a pretty little pyramid on the cover. That... that excites me. I'm interested in the greatest innocence book. I am. However, my funds cannot really allow for it at this at this exact moment. I will come back around. Hoping there's a way to make more money later. But maybe that's which Several thing. maps have been attached to a bulletin board hidden inside the alcove. They're held up by small pins. 
The board has come loose from one corner. Use your steel trap-esque detective mind to fix the board. The maps look old and faded. Your eye catches a map of Insulinda, a map of Revachol, and a map of Martinez. I need all of these things. Can I look at the maps without, uh, without purchasing them? Is that just like the books? Can I buy these maps, Storky? I'm sorry, officer. The map of Martinez is the only one available. The other two are not for sale anymore. And besides, you could scarcely afford them. Well, she has sussed me right up and down, and accurately at that. They're quite valuable, though they might not look it. The map of Martinez is 90 cents, though. Hmm, that's affordable. Why is the one of Martinez so cheap? That old thing. It's an out-of-date map of a tourist location that never was nor came to be. From when some design studio people tried to spruce the place up four or five years ago, they also renovated the horse statue, set up those coin-operated viewers, and designed the new street lamps. Clearly not a big fan of this design studio. In place the on. place does not look like a successful tourist trap, does it? What happened then? They didn't get that far, for some reason. A shame the project never got going. Would be nice if someone fixed Martinez up. All these ruins are bad for business. How dare I check the percentages to see if maybe that was a good option? How dare I? I could probably spare 90 cents an outdated, inaccurate map of Martinez that will get me lost and mugged. That sounds like an adventure. I want the map of Martinez. Always good to be informed of your surroundings. Mm. Alright, can I, can I peek? Can I peeky? This large map displays archipelagos. You see a constellation of small dots on the light blue emptiness of the Insulindic Ocean. The largest in the northeast is La Caillou. You are here. Another far away in the southwest, Seminese Islands, Ile de Fantôme. Mm, keep speaking, Daddy. Ozon, Laurentide, Fas Alamir, Archipelagos, North Arcade Islands. All just specks of dust on the vastness of the Insulindic. On the edges of the map, the color fades into a blur of dotted lines, black and white, disintegrating into mathematics. I don't think I've been able to use my visual calculus skill until now. The situation is not called for. In the northeast, a dust mite stands on the north coast of Caillou in a bookstore. It's you. had a whole whole head drip from that line all right i'm back now squint first can you see cities on the islands you can on caillou rivershaw a single black star on ozon fondelier and vimandu on archipelagos croyan moran villiers on seminine oldivai and on laurentide deora of the seven seas Place names are just gorgeous. Lost little pearls of light. Tiny fires in the dark. Aw, thanks, Empathy. 850 million people live on these little dots. An oceanic world of culture and commerce torn apart by history. Look at them edges. Mm, it's like a brownie piece. Crispy. The ocean breaks apart into a tangle of cosines and azimuths, all pointing into pale nothingness. Windy is the North Azimuth. Grad is the Northeast Azimuth. Samara is the East Azimuth. Seo is the West Azimuth. Isolas, they're called. Connections to other worlds. Words past the Insulindian. Unknown to you. You only know you've never been there. And desperately wish to You go. have little idea what they are. Distant stars. Gods. But looking at them makes you feel almost non-existent. Whatever they are, the Isolas are immeasurably large compared to you, and very, very far away. My encyclopedic knowledge has failed me. But even in failure, there is such beauty in the descriptions. Perhaps they are gods, 
gods of distance and outer dust. All right, let's look at the map of Revershore. The north coast of a verdant island is shattered by the delta of a river. It is the River Esperance. Countless bridges put the shards back together, connecting city blocks to river islands. La Delta says a great artificial heart in the center, teeming with life forms and construction. To the east, rolling hillsides, Le Jardin, Stella Marie, the suburbs of Saint Baptiste, swallowed up into the megacity. They sound rich to you. This is Rivershall East. And the west? Hudon. It's somewhere to live. Not bad. Then there's Jamrock. It's bad. People shouldn't live there, but they do. Then Forberg. It's almost as bad and much larger. Then Coal City. It's the worst. Oh no. And Martinez. It's so small you can't even see it on the map. No, wait. There it is. North of Jamrock. The strip of coast next to the Greater Rivershall Industrial Harbour. It looks downright despondent. It's almost Coal City, to be honest. Mmm, the worst of the worst. No, this is somewhere to be. This is all you have, but it's still something. Streets and sodium lights, the sky, the world, you're still alive. Yeah, that's the way to look at it. Let's not think about how we're standing in one of the worst places around outside of Coal City. Hello, hello. You're awaiting a Walmart order so you can start baking again. What, uh, what are you gonna... What are you gonna make? Are we talking cookies? Are we talking macadamia nuts? No, no one can afford macadamia nuts. Are we talking cookies, though? It's so nice to see you guys there. Another boring book. Just discarded here. Tell me more about this boring book. I am desperate for info. This bookstore is not strictly about crime, Ooh. romance, and biographies of famous people. There's also a wide range of paranatural literature. Why didn't Annette tell me about this section? Uh, what books are these, Plaisance? Mm. Well, that only makes me want it more. I can't have you end up, like, opening a police store next door and stealing my customers. Oh, no! Do you, do you think that's what the police do? We go looking for paranormal books and then we steal your customers by opening a police store next door. I'm not entirely sure how you arrived at that train of thought, but... So this one, of all the bookshelves, she specifically told me not to investigate further, and yet, it's the one that I most, most want to sneaky peekies at, and... <sighs> Kitsuragi, I need you to distract Plaisance. Everyone knows the most interesting thing about fascists was their magic. That's, I guess that's probably true. Though I shudder to say that there's anything interesting about fascists at all. Shelves filled to the brim with crime novels featuring... I forgot. I forgot what was there and that we already looked at it. How about these postcards, though? Hmm. Officer Kim, what are you doing? What are you... Oh, Officer Kim. What are you... Uh, Officer, this is no time. To bump and grind in the middle of the bookstore. You're going to have to stop that. I'm just kidding. Please continue. <laughs> Officer Kim has been incredibly stoic up until now. So the fact that he can let his hair down a little and grind my ass is okay with me. A small mountain of colorful board game boxes. Ooh. There are numerous types of games for all ages. A lot of shelf space seems to be taken up by Wirral-related merchandise. 
Uh, Storekeep. Tell me more. Wonderful board games, sir. The Viticulturist is a classic for sure. Or perhaps you'd like Archipelagos of Insulinda. A very educational game for those interested in geography. Will it teach me things by playing? Will I have an edutainment? I'll take it. Raubritta is a fun game of economic competition, but can get quite intense after a while. We have games for the whole family. You can play with your children. You can play an intense game of economic competition with your children. Who are you going to play board games with? Do you have friends or family? Ouch, Inland Empire. You didn't have to come after me like that. Do I have friends? Look at the lieutenant, longingly, with nothing but love in my eyes. I think after what just happened at the base of the stairs, we might be more than friends. Are you actually friends? Or just colleagues thrown together by circumstance? Hey, a guy can dream. Look at me. Who would want to have children with this? <laughs> I don't feel as if I have any kids. Yes, kids, friends, chicks. I have all of those. No. Uh, I don't feel as if I have any kids. But that would that would be devastating if it turns out to be untrue later. Friends are technically like family. You're still fiddling with that pendant, Plaisance. You hiding something over there? You know I'm a detective, right? And you keep you keep fiddling. For playing with friends, I'd recommend Suzerainity. It's a civilization building game where you build a civilization, then set off to brutally colonize and repress other civilizations. It'll cost 12 real. It's the crying shame of most games, isn't it? You start out building a cool civilization, but then you set off to brutally colonize and repress the other civilizations, and it's like, aww. I liked the first part of this game. I liked the part where we all had sheep and weren't mad at each other. So, uh, what about these virile things? Viral. Lousy auras there. No, role-playing games are popular among those types. You know, Nerds. you're into those kind of things. Personally, I don't like it. Not at all. <laughs> Come on, Blaisance. I'll DM you a quick one-shot. We'll have a ball. Come over to my, I'm guessing, quite unkempt apartment in Jamrock, where we will be beset by brigands. And play D&D &D with me. I've heard they turn people into occult enthusiasts. That they have it's rituals true. where they try to summon entities. Highly immoral stuff. You can still buy them, though. That's definitely 100% true, and it's not all just in good fun. Uh, look through the pile of all related items. Yes, please. Is there any dice? Any dice in An here? An endless variety of source books, law books, and codices litter the table. The topmost book is titled Welkin Compendium, second edition. There's also a large hardbound tome with intricate cover art, The Hunters of Catawack, Boreal Creature Compendium, and a pick-your-path adventure game book titled Tales of Wirral, Cavern of Velkrag. I mean, I could waste several hours choosing my own adventure in something like books. that. Board game section? Who wants to read books? Conceptualization. You know that you need me to read books to give you more fuel for your conceptual fires. Stop that. Is there anything that really catches my eye? Hmm, maybe I'm not into all this binoclard stuff. If they've told me what that means, I don't remember it. And I hope... I hope it's not a bad word. And I'm gonna get a naughty slap on the wrist. Anything that catches my There's eye? a box that says, We're out. 3rd edition Mega Setting Supplements Module. The side panel notes, A fantastic adventure board game. New maps and miniatures. A sticker on it displays 25 real. New miniatures? I'm in... I haven't the funds, but I'm so in. That price is steep, but then it's the third edition mega set in supplement, so it makes sense. Makes perfect sense. Much like Officer Kim Kitsuragi standing at the base of the stairs, I am in. 
Mm. That is good coffee. That's roasty. We're moving on from what I said. I want to buy the Suzerainty. Suzerainty board game. I want to buy the Wirral game. Yes, to both of those statements. I'll be back. Alright, anything I missed besides talking to Plaisance directly? I think we've investigated all of her. Ample books. Let's meet the woman herself. Welcome to Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. My name is Plaisance. Shouldn't you add paranormal and board games? I mean, it's already a long title, and I'm sure signs are expensive, but... Be welcome, and please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. Fair enough. I... I do take responsibility. And I'd like to apologize. Before we go on, you seem to be well off enough. Can you give me some money? I feel there won't be an opportune moment to ask later. <laughs> I love the politeness of that. It's very nice. But also a little bit forward. Are you the owner of this store? I am! The proudest owner of our little shop of culture. Her voice is high-pitched, as if to give it more penetration. Something you're interested in, Officer Kim? What if I want to buy a book? Your daughter is the one standing outside the store right now? Hmm? Annette, yes, my daughter. I hope she wasn't slacking off again with her nose in science fiction. Not Tell me, was she at her post, doing her job like a proper girl? I, if I had, like, a rating application would give her five stars, but thank God that doesn't exist in this world. No, she was, she was perfect. She was the best. Wonderful. Did you talk to her? Mm-hmm. Great. On a scale of one to ten, how compelled were you to buy books after talking with oh, her? Oh, a sixteen. Her madam. opinion of her daughter depends on how well she lured you into the store. Sixteen is not an option. I would like to not grade a human being, as to grade a human being is, rather ironically, degrading. Uh, she was a ten, though, if you're going to force my hand. My precious, her dedication brings joy to my heart. If you have children, I hope they turn out as great as my Annette. Mm, me too. She is immensely satisfied with the answer. The way you're handling her strikes me as wrong. Dangerous, dangerously thin ice to go after someone's parenting skills after just meeting them. Annette is quite the trooper. She's a great value add. That's sickening. I'm here to dismantle the free market and abolish child labor. <laughs> yes. Yes to this one. But I don't want to be labeled a troublemaker and run out of town think twice before forcing your hand on Plaisance's daughter if I were you. Yes, absolutely. I would I would very much much like to dismantle the free market and abolish child labor, but I don't think Plaisance is going to appreciate that kind of attitude. Uh what a what a trooper. Ugh. What a val a great value add. <clears throat> oh god. The synergy of it. Got caught in my throat. As a young girl should be, with the proper attitude, she'll have a bright financial future. <sighs> okay, uh, let's change the subject. The woman before you scans the store, her shoulders rigid and tense. Every now and then, she nudges her glasses. As if to say, are we done yet? So what if I want to buy a book? Goodness, you were already doing good browsing the shelves. Why do you stop? Don't you feel compelled? Go! Go! Get back there! The books await you! She fiddles her pendant and waves her bony fingers directly at you. You feel it inside your very bones. Uh, okay. I'll, t I'll take another look. I mean, do you have any other types of books you'd like to fess up to? You're very coy about that paranormal section. Everything is on the shelves. Take a look yourself. The shelves compel you, don't they? Mm, they certainly do. She's attempting to mentally direct you towards the shelves. She only wants you to buy the goods, 
She doesn't care about the books. Aww. You're a bookshop owner who doesn't care about the books? I'm offended. Do you even know what books you have for sale? I don't mean to question you. I'm just genuinely curious. Truth be told, not really. My sister brings in <gasps> most of the goods. I'm sure it's all very literary stuff with well-written prose. I... Can't speak to you anymore. You sicken me. Good day, madam. But you don't learn about the important things in life from fabricated stories. Sure. Shouldn't a shopkeeper know about her wares, or even the keeper of a store? Uh, where do you learn about the important things, then? The truth is available if you just know where to look, and you have to open and free your mind to understand. She nods at you, cryptically. Do you collect information by performing uh, mystic rituals in your basement, communing with old gods who effectively download the information into you as though you are a small thumb drive? Oh yeah, I'll take another look at the books. Thanks for your time. She smiles and nods, seemingly relieved. Farewell for now, book peddler. Lonesome. Long way home. Here we go. Home awaits. Walk past Station 41 and through the market. Past the Boogie Street Spearhead to the other side of the lake. The frozen eye at the center of the district. Then past the video rental store on the corner. There, at the end of a street lined with pine trees. A small house, no larger than a matchbox. 11 Voyager Road. You no longer live there. Those times are gone, and so are those people. Why did you come here? Why are you still here? And where's the dealer? You have to get back to work. That's all you have now. Interesting. I've remembered where I used to live, but I don't live there anymore. Do I still own the place? And in my mind, my memory of it is some sort of a Ah, a, a pustule-spewing, one-armed, sickly, alcoholic H.R. Geiger painting of a thing. It's all I remember of my, my former home. All right, bonuses? Learning calf for perception raised to five. Speed gives you one sigh. Thank you. I'm still performing a rigorous self-critique of myself. Critique. We're getting there. Three hours remain. I can forget. <laughs> After seeing the picture of uh, my home, I'm, I'm maybe it's time to forget. Eleven Voyager Road, eh? this one nothing to think about but unlocked and the rest of these are locked okay find more thoughts for our cabinet I love that little mechanic so uh, I'm gonna quick save it and then I'm going to instantly break through the curtains into our mystic ritual basement da -da -da. the curtains tattered with age and covered in dust hang before you, as if Rip taunting you. Be dramatic about it. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Yes? Sir, don't touch that. I told you it's off limits for the customers. Her hand has closed around her pendant, her fingers nervously playing with the talisman. Is she, is she gonna, like... Emperor Palpatine fingers me if I continue to, to to rip open the curtains. Parapsychologically speaking, we're done if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible for the consequences. It's too dangerous. Oh, I'm so curious about what you're hiding down there. I'm so, so curious. She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? 
Alright, I can play the police officer card. Oh, I need to get in there. Official business. But, I sense this place is calling for me. I must investigate beyond the threshold. I don't care. You can't stop me. I will open these curtains. Alright, I'll think about it for a while. She seems to be a practitioner of the mystic arts in some way. Maybe she would appreciate that I feel the place calling to me, but that doesn't seem like a solid excuse. She seems more likely as an upstanding citizen to be like, Okay, I'll bow to the overreach of the abusive law. That's fine. Let's try this. Why? It's not like anyone was killed there. She stops abruptly as her hand flies over her mouth, baffled by her own bluntness. Madam, no one but you ha has mentioned murder in this establishment. I am sorry. I don't mean to be so impolite. Just please don't go there. I can't allow that. You'll only make things worse and unleash the powers. What are the powers? All right, now I'm playing the mystical card. You must understand, madam. I, I don't wish to go against your boundaries, but I'd like to go in, in past your boundary curtains here. You do? My God, even more reasons not to mess with the curtains. Just step away, <laughs> dear sir. So there's something that you think is very bad down there. Is that where the kids play Dungeons and Dragons? Because I'd, I'd really like to check that out if it's not too much trouble. I don't want to be this unfeeling. I don't care. You can't stop me. Maybe there's like a, a back Thank you. door? Let's just talk about this first, all right? There's no reason for you to venture into the unknown. I'd be happy to talk with you more about it if it gets me into your curtains. That didn't come out right. What are you? A coward? <sighs> Think about the marvelous adventures waiting for us on the other side. Shh. Necktie. This isn't the time. You're a little cutie. I'll speak with you soon. Talking is always good. Go see what she has to say. Oh, I'd love there that. is something mysterious about the curtains. Be careful. Be careful about the curtains. The curtains, tattered with age and covered in dust, hang before you. As if Ripping taunting them you. apart. For real this time. I'll be back. I'll be back to rip apart your curtains for real this time. Another quick save. Madam, tell me about this presence in your basement. Hello again, esteemed officer, and welcome to crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. Why are you so uptight about those curtains? I just want to know what's on the other side. I already told you. It's just a storage room for employees. I don't understand why it's so important to you. Just a storage room for employees? Why is it... The worst thing in the world to be attracted to that, as I told you from my mystical senses. Just let it go, officer. Go buy some goddamn books. You're supposed to be drawn to the books. <laughs> I'm weirdly more likely to buy the books now. That really did work. She cast her spell. If it's just a storage room, then tell me, hmm? Why does it have a Seminese ward protecting it? Well, if it's just a storage room, then it wouldn't hurt if I just peeked inside. Ah, logic You've been lawyered, Plaisance. <sighs> I think she'll appreciate me coming at it from a mystical angle more. It's just for decoration. She wave... <laughs> wavers under your gaze, mouth pressed into a tight-lipped smile. Then something breaks. Oh, God, her smile! Okay, fine. It's just because this place is cursed, just like everyone said. They don't call it the doomed commercial area for nothing. I didn't know they called it that. Why? Are you happy now, officer? Happy that you've ruined everything? I guess I, guess I am, yeah. I certainly was when I was down by the river and chucked that steel ball into the sea. She closes her eyes and starts mumbling something to her pendant. How does this curse manifest itself? Why didn't you just tell me right away it's the curse? Have you sought help from anyone? Expert curse removal team officers Kim and uh, to be decided here. 
How does this curse manifest itself? The curse is so much worse than you could imagine. It's a disease eating at the very foundation. Shiver runs through the woman as she looks around the dimly lit store. It's the curse of financial distress, <gasps> of ruin and bankruptcy. She peers at the curtains again. Didn't, didn't that curtain just move? Did it? Wait, that's it? I was hoping for something more paranatural. Okay, I'm a little confused. What does that mean? Financial ruin, or the curtain moving? I don't know what I'm commenting on. Everyone knows that all the previous companies in this building have sooner or later declared bankruptcy, and their malicious spirits are still here, feeding off bad business practices and disappointing income statements. They're not, they're not dead, are they? They've declared bankruptcy, and therefore their malicious spirits are still here haunting the place? Did they, did they later die? There's something wrong with this building, I can tell you. Ever since I arrived, I've sensed an eerie lingering presence. As if I was unwanted here. There's probably just cute raccoons in the basement who have made it their home. And they're staring at you through the, the holes in the walls and the gap under the curtains. And you constantly feel like you're being watched. But it's just the cute little raccoons. It's gonna be fine. I'll go check it out. Sounds familiar. Strange. I feel unwanted too. <laughs> what does it mean? I mean, if I'm saying that aloud to her, instead of just as a self deprecating joke, um, maybe she'll feel as though I, I, can, I can sense this and help her in some way? Truly so? Perhaps the dark energies are leeching off you. You shouldn't stay in the store too long. It may be dangerous. No, I should stay in the store longer because I can empathize with your situation. Come on. Uh, why didn't you just tell me right away? Have you sought help from anyone? Would you like me to take the case? I could investigate and see if the curse is real. I don't think the curse is real. I just want you to let me in there. <laughs> Have you sought help from anyone? Yes. I've contacted numerous parapsychologists, and even a pair of Simonese mediators. They provided me with the wards. She nods at the strange cage-like trinket on the curtains. The wards help to keep the doom at bay and protect us against the darkness that lies further in the building. Even though now I fear, it's not enough. Why didn't you just tell me right away? I don't really, I don't really care. It's, it's her business. Uh, is your pendant that you've been fiddling, fiddling away, like the devil at the crossroads, just fiddling on down to Georgia, uh, is that part of the wards? Oh, this? No, it's a special Hymian amulet, blessed by desert pygmy shamans, with a spell of compulsion. It's to compel mm. people to buy books. It's very effective, but to be... <coughs> oh, sorry, I choked. To be honest, you just looking directly in my eyes and shouting in a very dominating tone, go buy some goddamn books, was about 20 times more effective than that pendant. Just if you're asking for an um, outside perspective. There are numerous spells cast throughout the store. I had the books anointed with a different inducement spell, for example. It's guaranteed to boost sales 15%. Ah. Yet you're on the brink of financial ruin, I wonder... Desert pygmy shamans. That sounds like a rather questionable way Doesn't to describe it. a group of people. Doesn't it just... Uh, would you like me to take the case? Let's, let's play gentle here. Most certainly not. I don't want anyone oh, who's come not on. familiar with the psychic arts to get involved in this mess. Stay away. Leave the spirits be, so they can return to their slumber. I am so familiar with the psychic arts. You can't even imagine. I, I've, I've got like a, a D10 in psychic arts. Come on. I, no, you don't like that sort of thing. I'm sorry, I phrased it. That My way. liege, you know what this case calls for? A parrot detective. A parrot detective. Yes. Yes. 
Oh, I have a high chance. Um, at the risk of uh, being being a sneaky little cheese boy, I'm gonna quick save it first because I, r I really want to get be behind that curtain. I really do. So I'm gonna be a sneaky little cheese boy. Hello again, esteemed officer, and welcome to crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. Stand back, Officer Kim. I'm about to ham it up. Slither up to her, you silver-tongued fiend. Show her what world-class perfidy looks like. <laughs> I am genuinely aroused by the way you said that drama. Thank you. Uh, wait, what if I don't want to lie? Ma'am, I came here to help. I have handled perinatural situations before. Are you sure? I don't think I haven't seen charlatans before. I have returned from the void, a paradetective from a long line of paradetectives. You're no paradetective. You look nothing like one. And you're clearly a drinker. Pardon me for being so blunt, but... Well, you're pardoned for being so blunt, but... You look like one. Thank you, Rhetoric. The lieutenant keeps his usual stony calm. He silently picks out his notebook. Making notes about me again. Go ahead then. Rock her world, he thinks. I'll compose some notes. <laughs> Thank you for your support, Kim. I admit I've had my share of drinks, but only because the spectral realm is parapsychologically taxing, you see. It's necessary to drink the spirits in order to contact the void. <laughs> I think this one's maybe a little more... Believable. How do you know all this? Well, I read two titles from your paranormal section upstairs, yes. Here we go. Your wards brought me here in the first place. The Seminese blood also runs through me. Or, I am the Void Revenant. I have the powers to de-bad all the bad energy. <laughs> Add a little touch of history to it here. You're part Simonese. Oh, it means our meeting couldn't have been mere chance. The hand of fate guides us. Mm, I know, right? You sweet little thing. Now kiss me on the cheek and send me behind the curtains. But I am not the only one at risk. I have to think of my daughter. You are certain you can help us? Keep us safe? I can't allow any collateral damage to hit us. Well, this has all one, been one big laugh, and I'm desperate to satisfy my curiosity. But now that you mention your daughter and the potential danger that she, she could be in from me rummaging around in the basement, weakening the foundations of the place with my constant stumbles, I am worried. But she's outside. I mean, if the whole place collapses on us, you're the only one that's going to die, and she'll be motherless and cast on the streets alone. But you also seem like kind of a strict slash bad mother, so I'm t I mean, it's none of my business, really, but... No, no problem whatsoever. Your family is safe. The phantoms are no match for me. Or just ask my partner, Kim. He'll vouch for me. Kim does not... Does not give me the strong impression that he'd like to be involved in my dramatics. Let's do this. No problem. If you promise... Good officer, then you might be our last hope. Do you swear it? On my honor. Actually, I'm not really I'm not really feeling the vibe anymore. No, the psychic force has left me. No, I swear it. Thank you, sir. There's one more thing I haven't told you about yet. The entity. Well, you should have started with the fucking entity. Do not act surprised. You know of these things, sire. Do I? My liege? <laughs> of course, the entity, for I have sensed its presence. I have sensited. Uh, tell me more. I mean, I, sh I should probably, if I'm playing the paranatural detective, be able to sense the entity and put on a show of that. <sighs> yeah, let's keep it. Let's keep it dramatic. You have. The entity takes the form of a woman, a witch, probably. 
I've suspected that she must be connected to the curse ever since I first saw her. Did you know that she lives inside the chimney? There's... There's a... There's a woman? And she's living in the basement. And sometimes she travels through your chimney. And she's probably real cold and hungry. And you've done nothing. You've done nothing to help this woman. And your superstitions have... Never mind. This isn't time for a lecture. But I'm... No, the chimneys aren't big enough for that. Chimney, yes. The passage between heaven and hell. Of course. <laughs> I guess at this point I can't really back off from the whole I definitely believe in all of these things. But I also don't want to, like, overdo it. Ah, at the risk of overdoing it. Yes. That chimney is part of the building's central furnace, and it's enormous. She has barricaded herself behind some metal security curtains. God knows what she's doing there. She's probably just minding her own business. Some unnatural magic, I assume. You should go find the entity and ask what happened to all the companies in the building. What is the source of this curse? Here's the key to the warded door behind the curtains. Take it. Yoink. Thank you, madam. Oh, and please do return to me after you've looked round. I'm quite anxious to know what she has to say about the curse. What you discover in there. I'll fill you in. Just like Kim Kitsuragi did to me at the base of the stairs. We're still on it. We haven't moved on yet. Unbelievable darkness and ruin. What? Unbelievable darkness and ruin? What do you discover? Probably just some office space. Don't be scared. Yeah. It sounds like th there's no financial curse. It's just a, an unpleasant uh, financial situation in a town that is actively dying. The coal mines all dried up, uh, and no one can afford to buy things from the stores that were here. And there's probably a lady living in the basement at... at a rough point in her her character arc. But maybe all of the supernatural things are real, and there's a curse, and the entity... Alright, I, I had a few more questions about the curse. Probably not. Probably not right now. Farewell, and I love you. Now kiss me on the cheek and send me behind the curtains. Oh, I'm sorry. I know I smell bad. I'll go. Quick save. Just all them saved. Fling open the curtains, Kim. I'm right behind you. You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. It's curtain time. You see a dimly lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. A doorway stands in the back, covered in dozens of scary little Sevenese wards. Your shadow looming over it like an omen. Mm. Oh! A small, terrified, oh! escapes from Plaisance as she tries her best to look away, her round face buried in her hands. I hope she washed them first. Mm. What have we here? Ghostly silhouettes of hair dryers. Ah! A vaguely androgynous portrait of a man. Gorgeous. Merely looking at that unmanly haircut threatens your masculinity. Well, we're going to have to work on that. Can I go ahead and. A heavy door haircut. with a missing handle Name stands before you. Covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of Semenese trinkets and charms. It appears to be locked. Knock on the door? I mean, that would, that would be polite. Break down the door. Due to my high, high pain threshold, I have a 17% chance. Or just unlock it with the key that she gave you. Which sounds like, like probably the right... Probably the right path. I, I mean, let's be polite. You never know if the ghosts are back there. Changing. I don't want to just burst in. Only an echo. No one is there. No one is back there changing. All right, it's time to unlock. After exerting some force, you manage to turn the key. 
It's eerily silent. The door slides slightly open, letting a draft of cold air into the room. Get behind me, Kim. I'll protect you with my body. Kim has something to say. Hey, buddy. What is this place? The lieutenant stares at the dusty training equipment. It is the netherworld, Kim. Beyond the veil. Looks, looks like it could be a, a gymnasium of sorts. Yes, but no one's been here in ages. He draws a stripe on the dusty floor with his foot. I doubt the electricity still works. Good thing we have a flashlight on us. Don't forget to take it out of your bag before we move on. That's a helpful tip, Kim. Thank you. I'll check my bag. An eerie feeling rises in your chest. What if there's a reason why no one's been here for ages? Let's just keep going. I'm sure it's just a regular abandoned house. Nothing mysterious here. I'm gonna strap myself with ill-deserved confidence. Yes. Sounds good. I love you, Kim. Thanks for speaking with me. All right. Uh, before I start wasting flashlight batteries, quick save it and... I do have a skill point. I'm kind of saving it in case we need to... invest in something mid-conversation. Uh, held in my left hand... Flashlight? Flashlight. Nice. I like that little square hood it's got. That's fancy as hell. I'm sorry, Kim. I'm sorry I blinded you with pepper spray. Sand is dripping from a punch bag. Why is it dripping? Instead of just, like, like falling out of. Why is it wet? Unlimited batteries. The poster says Sitius Fortis. The rest is worn off. <laughs> worn out wall bars. They look unsafe. Try them. Try them with your buns. <laughs> they seem pretty sturdy. I tried them with my buns. A barbell lies on the floor. The color has worn off its weight plates. Therefore, making it unable to tell how heavy they are? I don't want to have another heart attack. I'd better stay far, far away from these barbells. It's 60 kilograms. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of beast it's dealing with. <laughs> Lift them. Oh, that's not gonna... <laughs> that's not gonna end well. I can feel it in my triceps. There are no collars on the barbell. This is a safety hazard. This is a huge safety hazard. Thanks, visual calculus. I, I was groping for an excuse there to be lazy. Why does it feel so familiar? Is this familiar because I'm a weightlifter? Look, Kim, it's a trap. There are no collars on the barbell. Or just lift it like a man. <laughs> Look, Kim. You're right. The weight may fall off. Better not touch it then. What kind of sick bastard would just remove the collars? It should be a felony. It really should. It would be a violation of EPIS safety regulations if the gym was still operating. But it isn't. No one's supposed to come here anymore. Kim, look at me. Do you think I was ever once a weightlifter? Look deep into my eyes and tell me. No, it's not that. It's the stale smell of rubber. The squeaky sound of sneakers, your bruised knee against the mat, and a whistle. Then the feeling is gone. <laughs> the, co the coach was always so mean to me, and I don't know what I did. I don't know. It's just a memory. Oh, good. Oh, God. I thought I was back there for a second. Oh. A memory from another life. When you were young and fit. All right, let's, let's just leave that carefully on the floor. Try not to stub your toesies. Ooh, what's this? Is that one of the balls I threw <laughs> into the river? Shot put ball, yay. I can give that back to the gentleman. By the sea. Arr, we're the gentleman by the sea. 
that's not really what they sound like, but I thought it'd be fun. The hallway is blocked by old window panes and debris. Get out of here, debris! Also, get out of here, debris. A large demijohn full of strange liquid. Ugh. Wild animals stare at you in the dark, stuffed and mounted. Just like what Kim Kitsuragi did. Never mind. Never mind what he did at the base of the stairs. Airship rotors covered in spider webs. They remind you of blades. Airships. Sick. That sounds neat as hell. Do you peek? Peek in there. Okay, go all the way around then instead. Dismembered uh, mannequins? Good. Good. That's what I hoped to see back here. Money. Ooh, three dollars. Oh, damn. A naked mannequin torso. Avert your eyes, Detective Kim. A strange yellow color. That's probably the weathering from the many years of misuse. Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, sketches, and schemes like some ancient cave mural. Project Dread. Some of the writing has faded with age, but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. Inspect these racy photos. The photo collage depicts barren, icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual night. You see permafrost and glacial landforms, dead trees grown in under the snow. Entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. There are pictures of settlements on dried up riverbeds, abandoned in a storm. Animal corpses in the dark, carcasses and bones. You see primitive oil rigs built into glaciers, boreal dvorg, yurts under the snow, great mammoth-like beasts of burden. Albeit dark and cold, this vision also feels cozy in its own way, like eggnog or morphine, a much needed respite from our own world. Mm, morphine, a much needed respite. Yeah, I guess. A pinned postcard reads, the heat death scenario, a desperate fight for geothermal energy engulfs the world as Wirral becomes untethered from its sun. Drifting through the universe. Is this where they make the board games? Once upon a time? Is to be the, the offices? Inspect the drawings. These lithe, pointy eared creatures appear to be different types of Welkins. You make out autumnal candle Welkins casting wax based magic. Splash wax on your butt! Ah, it's hot! 16 damage! Translucent Welkins, with organs shining under their skin, and even ether Welkins, hailing from the vast emptiness of sidereal space. Who are all those creatures? Fantasies of a tortured, feverish mind? Clearly. You should adopt one of those Welkins as your persona. No <laughs> longer a mere man, but a Welkin. Sounds like that's gonna gonna put me on the, the fringes of society <laughs> if I completely what's the word commit to becoming a Welkin instead of no longer a man one of the Welkins towering among the rest appears to be different however oh this is important do, do examine the Welkin it's Vara Hamira a high Welkin his face white and scarred like cracked marble this is clearly a Welkin supremacist the note says, all non-Welkin races will be purged. The Haldor, the Tworg, the humans, and even headless men, all of them purged. Imagine a world filled only with Welkin, Green Welkin, Dread Welkin, and the High Welkin to rule them all. The High Welkin to bind them. An inordinate amount of time has gone into drawing these little Welkin creatures. Hasn't it? Hasn't it just some sort of tortured mind, no doubt? Why would anyone spend so much time on this? Who are these creatures? Who drew them? 
Are they real? I have so many questions. Are they real? No, I don't... One of them is a Welkin supremacist. <laughs> Why are we whispering? <laughs> well, this has been educational. Let's move on. Um... Why, why would anyone spend so much time on this? Well, it's it's cool. I'm not a huge fan of the supremacist angle, but I like the, the fantasy angle. Are they real? I don't think so. That's probably foolish to ask. Um, should we move on? I don't want to miss out on cool dialogue. Let's go through them. Some people really like building a world, I think. Even if it's just for a game. Yeah, yeah. Give me that world building. Who, who are these creatures? This looks like concept art for a project. It's not really real. Oh, thank goodness. I was worried. You know, one of them is a Welkin supremacist. Mm hmm. Political commentary. That one has a great beard, too. Mm. Political commentary and a great beard? This game has it all. Well, thanks for talking about it with me, Kim. Just look at those details. So much effort. I know, right? And for what? All gone. Inspect the schedule. This is a monthly calendar from the year 50. Cryptic words like Sprint, Daily Minimi, and GPI span the marker-drawn grid. The grand scheme of production and money. Minimi stands for a mini-meeting. It's part of a bigger framework for managing work called RUN. Station 41 tried to implement it a few years ago, but failed. So what happened? As time goes on, the numbers in the boxes grow rarer and rarer. The board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days. Only failure and regret dwell in this region. Just like my frontal cortex. Looks like they didn't make it. The lieutenant looks at the frigid ice field of nothingness. He looks chilly, so you gently wrap the arm with the flashlight around his shoulders and pull him close. Your body is very, very hot. He'll enjoy that warmth. A note in the bottom left corner of the chalkboard says, See the prod schedule filament for details. Mm, show me the schedule filament. Inspect the notes. The handwriting is only partly legible, but you can still make out three slogans. Call in, tune out, Wirral untethered, and heat death of the universe. Interesting. So there was like a hair salon, a gym, and a game development office back here? Board game development? This appears to be some kind of machine with a cube-shaped heart and a wired framework. The keyboard has a rectangular on-off button. A piece of paper still hangs from the printer. What does it say? A radio computer. Just sitting here without anyone inside. Do, do you think I should turn it on? If you were this machine, Officer Kim, would you like me to turn you on? Wink. We have one of these down at the station, but I never really learned how to use it. Well, let's see if it's got power. You mentioned earlier it probably there's no power back here, hence the flashlight. But uh, be the machine lights up like some prehistoric animal stirring from its slumber, revealing fluorescent play and print keys on the keyboard. The hatch on the machine's central compartment is wide open. Look inside the compartment. It's empty, like a beehive without its brood. Some cables have been left dangling, disconnected. Don't touch the cables. This is where the memory should go. Uh, what if we can find a memory card? Uh, print, print? Do, do print. Nothing happens. Aw, oh, well, shoot. Nothing happens. I guess we have to, well, you continue to press play. Press play until something happens. Break the radio computer. We'll look for some memory device. Blue velvet. Great film. Soft to the touch. Moth bit. Old 
side room over there I should investigate. Also. Oh, there's so much money in this development office. How did they ever go bankrupt? It's like five dollars here. I am rolling in it. Skis with slipstream printed on the laminated top layer. Steel rotor blades bearing a strip... What? A slipstream logo. A strip sleam. What is this? <laughs> it's the one thing. It's like, I'm sure you can do with a keyboard and mouse. Just hover over the item to find out what it is. But there seems to be no, no discernible way to do that here. You just have to take everything to figure out. Production schedule filament memory. Mm, now we're talking. Looks like someone tried to reconceptualize their business here. Tell me more. Look, the skis and rotor blades both bear the same slipstream logo. It seems likely that they started out making one, failed to turn a profit, and then pivoted to producing the other. But the question is, why did they start... what? Which did they start with, and which did they pivot to? What a strange leap of imagination, and yet they still failed. How sad. Well, that's just speculation. We don't know anything for sure. <laughs> so I can finish the thought immediately. Or perhaps I can really, really thonk it out. That's a good question. Nope. There's no more thonking from here. Uh, yet they still failed. How sad. That's just speculation. We don't know anything for sure. Seems like a fairly on-target speculation, though. Reality is ruthless. Ouch. It's true, but you didn't have to say it like that. It's definitely some sort of entity whispering in the back passages of my mind. Alright. Give me one second. Delightful shadow of Kim Kitsuragi. I'll be right back. of the most advanced RPG in the universe. I didn't necessarily want to go in here. But we're here now. It's too late to turn back. It's too late to apologize. Some money, thank you. Some sort of bear. He's bearing it all. I or too much. I'm so curious. But... Let's get back up here. Use the memory first. So what's this? This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker. The mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on alabaster skin. It looks ghostly and strangely ancient. The whole thing resembles Cadran mosaic tiles. Very pathetic. What did you call me? Uh, hold on. How do I know what Kedron mosaic tiles are supposed to look like? History classes. Students with their textbooks open. Studying the roots of our civilization. Those aquarelle blue tiles looked beautiful in the sun. Mm, I bet they did. 
Woof. What am I looking at? Radio frequencies, it seems. UKV 123.6. UKV 123.7. UKV 123.9. Some written notes, too. Sparse and cryptic. Hmm. Kim, do you have a personal handheld radio? Unclear. It looks like a cardiovascular system split into veins and capillaries. Very advanced. So we're dealing with something medical here? No, I don't think so. This must be an elaborate piece of art. Of course, the anatomy of the curse. No, I don't think that's what it is. It's probably just radio frequencies. <laughs> None of these are incredibly educated guesses in my mind, but all right, we'll start here. You think so? The web is comprised of radio stations, all lead back to one red heart, titled The Game Master Frequency. A note says, this one can listen in on any station it wants. Who's the Game Master? Someone very important. Am I the Game Master? I finally feel important. The leader of a massive on-air game built by these people. A conductor for the hundreds of story threads that pass through the Game Master's frequency. And who is playing this game? Whoever decides to call in to a call-in station, it looks like. All of this is gone, left unrealized. That sounds cool as hell. I wish it wasn't unrealized. There's no way a little basement studio working here could pull anything like this off. My god. It's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. Go on. The schedule. I know doom when I see it. The company was running out of funding. Nothing. It's just lines on marble. An echo from times long gone. No one has used the fireplace in ages. Hey, Kim. How can I help you? Okay. What do you think is going on with that computer, chalkboard, and fireplace? It, uh, looks like it's just a failed business. What the hell were they making? It's like an undercover counterintelligence program. It looks like they were making a game. And it would have been quite ambitious and spectacular. In a sort of meta-commentary about Disco Elysium itself, it seems. But we don't know about that, because we're in-universe, Kim. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Yes, that is the question. The lieutenant takes a step back, steepling his hands. He looks so, so sexy. It looks like one of those popular pen-and-paper role-playing games. Only these people were trying to automate it. Make it work on radio computers. What a novel concept. Utter madness, he thinks. As a compliment. <laughs> How were they planning to do that? Has anyone ever done this? And this was a role-playing game? What do you think happened to the company? Mm. What do you think happened to the company? No idea. They stopped filling out the schedule on the chalkboard. Has anyone ever done something like this before? Not to my knowledge. They make automated games in Grad, Messina, Konigstein. You know, places with industry. Not in Revachol West, among the ruins. But I don't think anyone has attempted to create an inter game before. We just don't have the technology. How are they planning to do it? Through call-in stations. None of the players have to be physically present. Anyone in the world can participate in a game, as long as they have a two-way radio. Then there's the Game Master frequency that listens in on the smaller call-in stations. I think that was supposed to coordinate the stories, functioning as a master of ceremonies of sorts. So this was a role-playing game? Indeed. Those Welkins are a dead giveaway. Role-playing people love that stuff. The world looks like a modified version of the Wii World board game, with hit death thrown in. Super cool. Someone should give them millions of real immediately. This game is too good to be left unfinished. We're getting better again, conceptualization. But you're not wrong. Wow! Wow! Indeed, it's ambitious wow. and untethered from reality, but... 
They were insane if they thought they could do this. It was just a play to cheat money out of their investors' pockets. The curse got them. I see no other explanation. The world is cold and lonely. This would keep it company. Let's finish it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, great, great idea. I'm not really sure if we're capable of finishing it. Do we have any money? Let's give them more money so they can finish it and make it even bigger. I would love to finish it. We do have, you know, a corpse actively hanging in a tree outside. Literally just outside. That we should probably get back to. Uh, I don't think they were insane. They were perhaps a bit ahead of their time. And I appreciate that. And I have no money to give them, so none, none of these options are jumping out at me. Um... I, I do want to see if Kim thinks we can finish it, but I don't want to lower myself in his expectations even further. It's too late for that, I'm afraid. A half-smile breaks out on his face. It's too late for that, I'm afraid, he says, looking around the derelict room. The pipes howl, and a rat crosses the floor. Well, the rats could work on it. We could teach the rats to code. Okay, let's keep moving. Sure. Thanks for musing with me, Kim. I appreciate you so goddamn much. Alright, memory slot. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. Insert the production schedule. Like a smooth draw, the filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play key starts blinking. Press play. A bar of fabric right above the keyboard starts producing a soft hum. The sound of static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. Have you stirred the ghost of the doomed commercial area from its rest? Could this be its dismembered heart beginning to flutter? The static gets louder, slowly filling up the abandoned hall until a voice speaks out, crackling and old. Cutting into the air. Good afternoon. Fortress accident on Rue de Saint-Gislaine. This is East Insulindian Rapid Station 1. Please repeat. Is this the production schedule? Hmm. Yes. Uh, let's play along. Why did you call me Fortress Accident? Fortress Accident is the company on whose name the terminal you are currently using has been registered to. Do you have any other information about this company? One moment. You hear her flip through a catalog before she reads out with studious care. Fortress Accident SCR produces revolutionary interactive call-in radio games. That's what the catalog says. That's not bad. Wow, so conceptual. And uh, what's that, this interactive call-in radio game? Any other questions? The static drowns her response. You hear her ask when the connection finally improves. Uh, are you a machine, or are you alive? She seems very alive. Seems like I'm just now tuned to a radio frequency. What's the production schedule? The filament you have inserted into the reader. Ah, thank you. Yes. That was a question. Have you inserted oh. it into the core? Yes, I have indeed, madam. Good. Please repeat the password. Um, raisinets. Tooth decay. Twelve. Password. Of course it would have a password. That's why there's a human administrator involved. All right, I'm really bad at passwords. Can you give me a hint? This is the police. Please open this thing. <laughs> I mean, anyone could just say that. I don't know the password. She seems sweet. Let's be honest with her. Received. I will register this login attempt. All right, I'm going to have to think don't about the worry. password. Passwords have a way of turning up sooner or later. Fortress accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? So I can 
me try the password. She is keeping track of my number of failed login attempts, presumably. I don't know if there's an eventual limit. Uh, are you alive? This seems so rude to ask, but y yeah, tell me. Yes, I am alive. I am 74 years old, and my name is Yvonne. Yvonne, it's a pleasure to meet you. She repeats passwords. Programming people are all paranoid. My partner tells me that you're here because radio computer guys are all paranoid. Is that true? In your experience with radio computer guys? They are merely cautious. It's my job to protect their filaments as a password repeater at the East Insulin Bean Station. And uh, where are you? I work as a repeater at the East Insulin Bean Repeater Station. It's my job to know where you are for this accident. As for me, well, I am sitting in my cubicle, surrounded by a wall of radios. Doesn't it get lonely, sitting there all by herself? Does it? Lonely? <laughs> why would it get lonely? I get to talk to people all day. That's why she does this. Now, please tell me if there's anything else I can do for this accident. I don't think we know what the password is right now. Let's take another look around. That's all for now, and thank you, Yvonne. I love you. I'll be back. Thank you, and goodbye. The old lady's voice disappears along with the static... Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. Can I print anything? Nothing happens. Behind the hatch sits a cube-like crisscross of filaments, smoldering in the dark like fireflies. I'm hoping Silver that... tape on the side says, in a black marker, the production schedule. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. I'm hoping that just leaving it in here is fine. It's not gonna, like, burn out after a while. <laughs> if I leave it in, should I remove it and take it with me? And risk it getting soggy from my many misadventures? Or should I just leave it here? I'm gonna risk leaving it. And also quick save. Alright, so there's another level up here. Seemingly a bare basement. I'll go back. An iron safety curtain curves before your eyes, folded like a bellows. It covers half the room, blocking the way into a colossal industrial chimney. Perhaps the lair of the Entity... This must be where the... Entity... lives. Yes, indeed. Knock, knock. What an odd thing to do. Nothing happens. Why? I'd like to speak cordially with the Entity, please. Still nothing. No one's home. I don't want to be an asshole. I've, at this point, I'm right on the edge of being a giant asshole. Let's leave. We've got cans. La Delta 51. A ball used for playing shot put. A favorite pastime of elderly gentlemen. You feel like you should hold on to this and make good use of it. To sell such beautiful old school sports equipment would be a sin. The sunlight has made this postcard almost completely sepia-toned. Midtown traffic passes. Overhead, the ghosts of skyscrapers disappear into a beige midday mist, vapor rising from the delta on which the district was built. The postcard is prepaid. Score! I'm gonna get in touch with my gram-grams. A map of Martinez. Dating from 48. The title on the top reads, Bienvenue à Revachol. It's a bit out of date, as it was originally created by a design studio in a failed attempt to spruce up Martinez and turn it into a fancy tourist location. The worn map Show me. features the patchwork grid of the streets of Martinez, with directions to appropriately touristy locations. Year 48 resides on the upper right corner. Trace a path through the grid. Not sure 
what I would be basing that off of, but sure. Your finger moves through the various streets, across Rue de Songzis Lane and Rue Sansipa, over Saint Brun and Martinez North, finally coming to a halt on the spot where you are currently standing. Although the map gives no such indication itself. For a more detailed view of the map, go to your journal and select the map tab. Oh, I would love to. Take me to my journal. This is my thought cabinet. Interesting that, like, the password is obviously something I need to find. It's not something I can suss out through thought cabinet information. That makes sense. I finally have a map. Sweet. So I am literally just in the building next door to the hanged man. We have not been to the fisherman shacks, to the church, along the docks, too much. What is that massive cube structure by the Martinez waterfront? I guess that was perhaps a planned, a planned addition that does not exist. Interesting. Oh, this is great. Keeping such such tight track of everything I need. Thank you. Including the barbell, from when I want to prove my manly might. Alright, great. So I could knock even harder, but ah, oh, what a... What an asshole. I see in the chat, I appreciate y'all's company while I decorate for Christmas, slash Yule, and bake. I am so grateful for your company on this lazy Sunday of ours. Though with you out there baking up a storm, it's hardly lazy anymore. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. At the risk of a As holery, before, we'll knock even an harder. An iron safety curtain curves. Be Those curtains prove to be surprisingly Ow. sturdy. Your fist hurts now. My friggin' knocks. Okay. If this is really an entrance to the chimney, then there must be a furnace somewhere as well. Maybe there's another way to get in. Uh, I'm gonna get all sooty. Can you please try to refrain from attacking random things? Yeah, sorry. Sorry, Kim. I need to find the malignant entity, Kim. This is the chimney. This is not random. This is significant. I want to see what's on the other side. I can, I can try. I can do that for you, Kim. Thanks. No, oh, no problem. No problem, buddy. So, do I only have, like, three hit points? <laughs> and I've lost one of them. Am I reading the UI correctly? In any case, there's no way we can get in right now. Be a little bit Let's more careful. Further. Knock even harder. Oh, it's okay. I may need to, like, find some food or something. Not exactly sure. Definitely wasn't a password. Now that we know we need a password. Your flashlight point. slides over. Some of the writing has faded with age, but you can still make it. Seemingly nothing new. This old fireplace is the whole thing resembles Cadran Mosaic. Seemingly nothing new there. Um alright, we'll check lower. Down we go. Stand it down here. You see a terrifying ice bear with a strange compartment in its belly. The door is covered in frost, and the bear's eyes are glowing red. Is is the bear mad at me? The bear looks oddly realistic. Is it taxidermy? What is this thing? It looks like a giant ice bear. The lieutenant doesn't answer. His eyes are glued to the animal. A sharp slice of light shines out from its mysterious belly door. Let's take a peek. A gust of freezing cold air rushes to greet you. <sighs> you hear a low grumble as the bear regulates itself. This is the inside of a refrigerator. All right, seal me in, Kim. I'm doing a little cryo treatment to help my wrinkles. The lieutenant takes a peek inside. 
His hand has found the holster of his gun. I'm not gonna tell him to relax. That's just good police work. Look inside the refrigerator. The shelves are empty. All you see are crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name, Revachol Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. Examine one of the ice cream wrappers. A friendly cartoon bear smiles back at you from a glossy cellophane wrapper. It looks nothing like the fridge. Because it's friendly. You see, take the note from the door. You pocket the note and the little fridge magnets keeping it on the door. Ooh, free magnets. So what is a giant bear-shaped fridge doing in an abandoned cellar? Good question. It looks like an ice cream fridge. So, they tried to sell ice cream from this hyper-carnivore? I know. What an unfortunate marketing choice. I mean, I think it's cool. I'd definitely take ice cream from his belly. What is even worse, the bear is still costing them money to this day. The lieutenant points at the red, snaky cable running from the fridge. The fridge buzzes with energy. The electricity bill on this thing must be catastrophic. And on that note, let's finally close the door. Sorry, sorry everybody who has to pay for the electricity bill. Alright, it is getting a little late in the day. 1700 hours. I don't know if Kim has like a, a family to go home to. Someone that loves him. I wouldn't know what that's like. I wouldn't know. <laughs> An ice cream maker defrosted and unplugged. <laughs> the flashlight casts a strange shadow. There is a hidden doorway here. Two rusty rifles are hidden above the piping. They look inoperable. Someone has stuck some busted guns beneath the ceiling. Some sort of a weapons cache back here. A few bricks have fallen off, revealing a compartment behind the wall. It's too dark to see in. Where are we? It seems like an old bunker from the revolutionary period. Look at all those rifles. Must be an old weapons cache. Uh, look, there's a hole in the wall. Do you want to peek, peek your head through? I don't. You could. You you could. You should. There is, yes. And there also appears to be something inside the hole. Interesting. Do you want to take a look? Yeah, get, get behind me, Cam. I'll protect you with my body. I'll look inside. Your hand reaches deep into darkness and spider webs, rummaging around. You find rusty rifles hidden away. Rifles, Kim! I'll just inspect them without shouting. It's fine. Most of them are rusty and inoperable, like the rest. But one catches your eye. A bolt-action model with a fine woodstock, in better cosmetic order than the others. Ooh, shiny. This one looks nice. That's a rare sight. Seems to no longer be functional, but still a beautiful thing in its own way. Uh, what does this mean? A rifle? Here? It means there are firearms, albeit inoperable, still lying around in Martinez. It's an interesting coincidence, I would say. Might come in useful in the future. We're definitely gonna he solve likes the mystery this find. of missing rusty rifles. He likes this find. Aw, Kim. We're bonding. Alright, nice. Leave this deer here to its lonely eternal fate. A frozen ice cream maker that is still running. I'm gonna make and sell ice cream for the kids. It's gonna be not up to code. Two cables are plugged into the breaker box. The red one leads to the ice bear fridge, and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby. Hmm. No need to mess with them yet, but good to know. Oh, what's this? Some sort of 
dusty old tank top. Insane mesh tank top. <laughs> this mesh tank top is insane, you guys. Where did you even get that one? No, really, who put it in that drawer? No further comments. You wear that at your own risk. One to drama, clinically insane. I mean, what, what, am I, what am I getting now? Conceptualization. That's hard to beat, but it also has an unsavory order, which is... Or even an odor, which is limiting my suggestion. So if I do end up needing drama, swap out from a nips top. Sounds like a good time. Intercom wires running into the breaker box. I don't know where that would poop us out at. I'm scared. I'm scared to poop. Okay. More money than ever before. chimney-related items yet. I have not been on the right side of the room this whole time. Chimney-related items. Great. The wall is collapsed. It's inaccessible now. Mm. Mm. Quick save. Just a curse. A thick layer of cold dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. Looks like this furnace has a face, and it's a face of agony. Aw, poor little guy. Why would you kick it? It's already in agony. If I smear my hands with coal, am I, like, endearing myself to the furnace? Or am I just being messy? Just a little messy goblin. Uh, look inside the furnace. It's dark and grimy here. In the darkness, you can hear chatter. It's coming from above. A voice, or several voices talking to each other near the smoke chamber upstairs ho oh there near the smoke chamber upstairs what are you doing the lieutenant asks when he sees you climb halfway inside the furnace i hear the murderer of the hanged man talking we can't be sure of that that's that's a large leap i'm hallucinating or maybe it's the entity i'm not sure kim but i think i can hear someone talking upstairs that seems reasonable. Wait, really? Maybe it's coming from behind the safety curtains we saw upstairs. Yeah, they hurt. They hurt a lot in my hands. Yell hello into the furnace. A 42% chance of succeeding. It's really hard to remember the word hello. What is this thing? Is it a furnace? Looks like it. Looks like an old central furnace used to heat the building. It's connected to the chimney. He opens the door and gingerly peeks inside. No one has used it in ages. No signs of any recent fire. Only dead rats. Those voices I heard. Maybe it's the malignant entity. Plaisance said it lives in a chimney. I mean, in the sense that it's probably the thing she's labeling the entity, yes. But I don't want Kim to think that I think it's... It's the actual entity. I mean, technically it is. If there's a living thing, it is an entity in the furnace. But... Okay, fine. You're right. The rooms do look like they're connected. But malignant entities don't exist. At least not the supernatural kind. Oh, you never know, Kim. Always oh, has I'm, to I'm, be the I'm skeptic to agree this with man. Alright, uh, so I can yell and that is about it. I'm not gonna kick it. It's been through enough already. 42% chance, not ideal to then raise our skills to return to try it again. I'm sure we're going to be back here messing around with the ice cream and bear fridge. So, one thing I did not check is the gun. Broken Bell McGrave from ages past. It's a four-shot bolt-action military rifle with a wooden frame. I wonder if some sort of collector Wants, wants a go at this, and will pay me large sums. Okay, but what makes an entity living? Sentience? A lifespan? This is a fascinating question. 
What's the difference between an entity and a living entity? I don't know. Because even like a ghost would have sentience. But a ghost is not living. Or is it? I don't know. I am sadly lacking, as I glance briefly at my bonuses over there, I am sadly lacking in savoir faire. And it makes me feel a little self-conscious about myself, if I'm being honest with you. It sometimes happens. Sometimes I'm honest with you. Before we leave the basement, I have to see where this, uh... Go back onto the pallets. There you go. There's a good boy. I have to see where these stairs lead. Hope that we don't burst into the back changing room of a pageant. Ah, it just comes out here. Sweet. Mmm, you can smell the corpse from here. Having the ability to reason and react to the world around it, but what really is reason? I don't. I wish I knew. Questions swirl around in my mind like soup, and it is spicy. Okay, while we're out here, um, gentlemen with their shot put ball that I so, so callously tossed into the sea. Hey, I got you. Oh, watch my shins. Watch my shins, you madman. I can probably put the flashlight away instead of blinding this poor guy. Un unequip. Unequip. There you go. Hey, I got your ball. Let me make sure I don't mess it up. Horribly. I got your ball. We are still waiting for a replacement for the bull you sent sinking. Yeah. I know. Ooh, maybe they can tell me about the antique firearm. Here's your ball first, though. First and foremost. What is this? Are you mocking us? This isn't for Betonk. I'm sorry, I thought... I'm sorry. Now, now. No need to get angry again, René. I'm sure the officer tried his best. It's not like there's a bull kiosk here in Martinez. I'm very sorry. It's the best I could find. I thought it was exactly what you needed. It felt like the same heft from what I stole from you and launched into the sea. The best, huh? This isn't even a bull. But fine. I guess you did attempt to write your hooliganism. Consider it forgiven. Consider your hooliganism forgiven. Alright, I replaced the ball. <laughs> so I've evened out my sins, at least. That's good. Uh, do you know anything about this rifle? While we're here... It's a Bell Magrave. 4.46 caliber. Breech loading. Revachal made. <laughs> Good weapon, accurate, and reliable. Breech loading? Does that mean you, like, clench around betwixt your butt cheeks in the tender fabric of your trousers, and then... Whoosh! Is that breech loading? I'm confused. This one's inoperable. The bolt spring is missing, and the mechanism is jammed shut. Still a beauty. Where did you find her? In the secret... Uh, dark entity basement game development studio over there I'm not surprised there are probably lots of forgotten wartime weapons lying around here back in the day everyone had something stashed away as for the rifle I don't know what else to tell you these BM446s are an antique no one uses them anymore the ammunition is impossible to find Oh man hey I saw that statue we were talking about Ah, yes! King Philip III, on his steed. A reminder of what Revachal once was. Oh, absolutely. At the mercy of a cocaine-snorting tyrant who emptied the treasury so he could sleep on a bed of gold. A superpower, feared and respected. A testament to what this country can be under the leadership of a true king. Someone who knows how to rule. Hey, how should a true king rule, in, in your guys' estimation? Decisively. 
without fear of offending the sensibilities of the frail and weak-minded among his subjects. This is something the insurgents never understood. Seems to me a leader should take care of his people before himself. Powerful leaders, not afraid to do what must be done. That's what this country needs. Boo. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I'm pretty sure how I feel about that, actually. It seems to me a leader should take care of his people before himself. This isn't one of those, put your oxygen mask on you first so that you can help others. Leave the gold in the treasury, you selfish cocaine snorting such and such. A nation is only as strong as its leader. That's why it was such madness to try. Don't get started on that again. What happened, happened. There is some weariness in his voice now. He has heard this rant many times before. The carabineer doesn't reply, but his entire being communicates unbreakable resolve. No one and nothing can change this man's mind. He is as rigid as they come, Ooh. still in that antique uniform. It's a symbol for him. Rene, you're... We are as rigid as they come. I... How should a true king rule? What was that about cocaine? Let's talk about something else. Yeah, let's talk about something else. You get me started talking about cocaine, I'm just gonna get... gonna get the urges, and... Uh, right. I can't handle it. Alright, so I'm sorry about your ball. Um, that really did nothing to improve my percentages. But we'll, we'll be back. We'll be back. Once our percentages are improved. So now know that I need like a... What? Exactly two pieces for my rifle? For us to be restored to working order, but that even if it was restored to working order, we would never find ammunition for it. Nor is there anyone I'm desperate to shoot at the moment. So still on to plan, uh... Sell it to a collector for large sums of cash. That's my... My motto. Trash I can pick up here. As I probably already did. I have a little bit more money. Maybe worth swinging back by the bookshop at some point. I need to be able to yell up in furnace to resolve that whole curse situation. 48% chance is better than most of the things I'm waiting for. I think this would like some apartment buildings back here. Another unexplored area of mine. Though we are past the two hour mark, it's hard to want to put this game away as the world welcomingly sucks you in to its warm embrace and just peppers your little baby ears with gorgeous dialogue. My little baby ears feel peppered. The graffito says a firing squad for the rich. Apartment number eight. Their mailbox is overflowing. Ooh, 25 cents. Door number nine is locked. You hear someone walking around inside, rearranging the furniture. The number on the panel says 10. Mm, I'll come back to number 10. Just gonna explore the hallway for now, as we are so late in the session. Someone has drawn a five-pointed star on the wall. That isn't just a five-pointed star. It's an inverted white pentagram cradled in a wreath of antlers. The iconography of communism, in other words. Look out, Kim. Inspect the symbol closer. The star and antlers was developed in the sixth decade of the last century and quickly adopted by Mezov and the communards during the revolution. Even today, Half a century after, the star and antlers retains the ability to evoke hope, disappointment, and fear in equal measure. What does it evoke in me? That's a very important question. Uh, why is the star upside down first? To symbolize the toppling of the old order. 
Makes sense. Also, some social democrats were already using it. And the antlers? The wreath of antlers represents a natural crown. It was about building a society that could exist in accord with the natural world, and at the same time, above it. Why white? Oh, why? Because white is the color of peace. That makes sense. What does it evoke in me? Nothing at all yet. Right now, it's just meaningless shapes on a wall. I think it's kind of cute. It doesn't evoke anything in me, I mean. Sorry. I got ahead of myself. This box is filled with cleaning chemicals. Smells of laundry detergent. Mmm. Mmm, yes. Mm, that's good stuff. Yes? Oh, sorry, Kim. I was trying to... I was trying to gently brush aside the plywood behind you there. And instead I just grappled that ass. Fifteen cents. The breaker box is full of cigarette butts. Aw, poor thing. Someone's growing rosemary, thyme, and a cactus. Just a door. Nothing for you here, right now. Wink. What? Jingle jangles. That's obviously something for later. Can't wait to return to the jingle jangles. Door number 28. A door to be remembered. This is the door to apartment 29. Complete silence. Whoever lives here isn't home. This is the door to apartment number 30. Voices from within singing along to some buoyant dance track. There's bottles over there. They're right they're right in plain sight. I can't get to them and it's it's killing me, officer Kitsuragi. Oh, I'm never going to get those bottles. Okay, fine. I'll take my 15 cents and go. Sorry. Sorry, Kim. I got very indecisive about whether I wanted to select the door or not. Exit. Eviction notices and missing pets are plastered on top of each other. Don't evict my missing pets! An old shoe rack. Boots, sneakers, and old slippers. Hmm. These shoes come in three different sizes. Are covered in some sort of slime. Oh, uh, go. Uh, 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 uh. 42 cents. The toilet is covered in some sort of slime. The sinks, too, drenched in slime. Apartment of 12. Number, even. A loud rumbling snore comes from within. Oh, it's raining and pouring. Alright. Back to the start. A woman to speak with. A locked door. Seemingly some sort of police site. 
Note reads, foreclosed by Martinez Realty Associates. Another balcony. Maybe there's 15 more cents out here. there. You were the one spraying paint all over the place. We had a conversation earlier. I don't wish to repeat it. Good day. Ruination has come. The broken arches betray the once grand history of this building. It towered over the harbor until it happened. What, uh, what is it that happened, I wonder? A great force from the northeast fired into the city. Heavy artillery shelled the coastline, fired from the water. A straight shot into Revachol. The tenement acted as a defensive wall against the worst of the shelling until it was destroyed and they had a direct firing line. It's not really something that should act as a shield against the shelling. Oh, yeah, the tenements, where all the poor people live. Good. Take in the ocean. I don't think your stomach capacity can handle that. Look at the ruins in the water. Those arches acted as support for something greater than what you see now. Only three stories stand where nine to twelve once did. Restoration has failed. What the shelling took out was never rebuilt. Who did this damage? A fleet. The combined armies of Occident and Grad, with Mesk volunteers, a five-nation army, hundreds of vessels. They massed airships further down in the Bay of Revachol. The artillery was so powerful. The ships not only required gyroscopic stabilization, they were anchored into the ocean floor as well. Many are still there to this day. If you squint, you can just barely see the shadow on the water, far in the northeast. Cannons still ready to placate Revachol. Oh, hey, Kim. Do you know who shelled our city? The coalition. But that was a long time ago. I think we should move on. It's chilly up here. Yes, I... I can see that. He does not like talking politics of this kind. Well, that's fair. I need to make you uncomfortable. Time to go. Bottles, I can get my greedy drivers on. Above, tarps flap in the wind. Forgotten hammers and nails rust. It's my nickname in high school. Tarps flaps in the wind. Two dollars, damn. Just sitting out here. Door is locked. Chairs new. Someone lives back here. The skull is also new, and it's adorable. Alright, I'll come back up to have another conversation with her and try that door another time. We have a few bottles to turn into the tear machine. But it's probably not wildly important to do so just yet. We have that lady to speak with, we have balcony... Balcony girl to speak with, we have the... Not union representative, but... Co corporate representative? Not here to speak with? Perhaps. So we have a couple of loose ends. However, the primary objective is still to get that body down. Looks like there was more construction here once, decades ago. And I just don't know how to do that. We have our Kunoified boost. But even with that, our chances are very low. So low that I'm worried we're not going to get another chance if I keep trying it. But maybe we could just quick save and burst through. I also have a lot more money now than I once did. So it might be worth checking the clothing shop. I can't remember.
wonder if the place where there's like a tear machine also sold some clothing they might have. But there's the guy down by the traffic jam who sells clothing as well. And I'm wondering if any of any of the clothes they sell boost your endurance. Would be why. Because if I could get just like a touch more, that'd be great. So let's throw our bottles in here. See what happens. I just can't stop selecting Kim Kitsuragi's delicious backside. The tear machine stands in the corner. Your bottles clunk into the machine. And the money appears with a satisfying jingle. Mm, I'm so rich now. You see several packaged raincoats fill a low shelf beneath a display of croissants and juice bottles. The raincoats are transparent, except for the big Fritta slogan on the back. Would a raincoat, in addition to my gloves, not only be a fashionable choice, but increase my endurance? Which was possible? Ah, yes! Plus one to endurance. I was just about to say, I wish it was possible to see the stats before I purchase. And thank you, game. You've given me everything I wanted. So $4. Um, that would take us back down to effectively 10 Which means we could not purchase any of the books or goodies that we want. But it's really, really important to get that body down. So I'm going to buy a raincoat. There you go. Thanks. Thanks much. Alright. I hope she doesn't mind if I change in here. Be rude. I can also get some drama going. Whoop whoop! No, not the time. There we go. I am so endured right now. You can't even begin. It's gorgeous. I am gorgeous. We're moving on. All right, let's check our percentages one more time with the addition of our raincoat and a non-vomiter. What are we at? Stop throwing rocks. This is a crime scene. There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Emitting it is all it does now. Still 28%. I don't know what we can do to boost that. It's such a shame. I don't know how many more opportunities I'm going to have, because it's like I would need to put a point in endurance to ungray it. And endurance is really not one of the things I'm trying to soak points into right now. So I gotta be real careful. Let's take a wild stab in the dark. Let's save it properly. Mm, not an autosave. There we go. Give him a full save. Quick save as well. And then we'll, we'll try it. We'll try it. And if we fail wildly, well, that'll be the end of the session. <laughs> now you just need a red balloon and a paper boat. I really am rocking this Georgie cosplay. No clown is going to get me. <laughs> you should pick this game up. It sounds really fun. It really is, like, intensely fascinating. All the different voices in your head, etc., and gorgeously presented. There he still is, looking right first through area. you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated. The pneumonia only makes it worse. The a combination forces tale. tears out of your ducts. You manage to keep it in once. The second time, not so much. When the vomiting is done, your cheeks are wet with tears. What a shame. Ammonia didn't help at all. I think I don't want to be a cop anymore. <laughs> yeah. 
That's probably for the best. Nor does the win right now. Feel the lieutenant pat your back rhythmically. Oh, thank you. The weight is reassuring, like a crenel on solid fortification. Pat, pat, pat. That's so sweet. I've seen strong men turn themselves inside out for hours. You are facing tough odds here. Alcohol withdrawal makes it considerably harder. Can we do something else? I think I, I think I want to solve something else now. Oh, do it without me. I just can't keep it down. Is that an option? Because, yeah, I'm really bad at this. This is bullshit. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to be a cop. <laughs> uh, why can't I keep it in if I've been a cop my whole life? I've seen captains puke their guts out. It never gets easier. You never get used to the smell. Every Monday is cadaver day. Throw up, investigate. Throw up, initial autopsy. Throw up, bag it. Bag, bag it? Why would we, why would we do that? Then drive to the station. Maybe throw up on the way there if you didn't bag the thing tight enough. Oh, you mean the corpse, I see, I see. You seem to be fine, though. I think I've What's lost my secret? sense of smell. There's a pause. A white lie. Hmm. Not being hungover helps, too. Yeah, that's true. Okay, can you, can you do it without me? No. This is a two-man assignment, because it needs two officers to complete. I need your help. He withdraws his hand and looks you in the eye. You need to get your shit together. That's fair. That's a fair assessment of my current situation. Uh, okay. No, I, I agree with that. We should go talk to the locals. Find something else to do while the wind changes. It's pretty bad right now. Yeah, that's, that's fair. That's fair to say from where I'm standing. You've gained a thought. When this dialogue is over, go to your thought cabinet and internalize it for special bonuses and effects. Give it half an hour. Get yourself together. Then come back and have another go. All right, give it half an hour. This is locked. Uh, I will leave and go to my thought cabin. I have one more open slot in which I can now fit the volumetric shit compressor, where I volumetrically compress my shit to try to get it together. <laughs> Can I not start thinking about another one simultaneously? Or am I just not pressing the right button? Mm. There we go, internalize. But put it in, in this slot. And then internalize it. Not sure why that does not seem to be a thing. I'd like you to select the volumetric shit compressor. Nice to know those cost one slot. Okay, I internalize. Yes. <laughs> Made that much harder than it needed to be. Okay, so I'm at 85 out of 100 experience points. To get it? Your shit is a part. It's rather unbecoming of a cop and a human being. It's supposed to be the opposite of that. Together, compressed in a small area. To achieve a solid level of shit compression, squeeze your butt cheeks together for 30 minutes. Do something similar with the two hemispheres of your brain. Talk to people. Maybe that will help. <laughs> By the way, I wanted to say thank you for all the amazing work you do on the No Sleep Podcast. I just finished the Season 10 section where David and company are on tour... I really enjoyed your hosting and the stories. No Sleep is my comfort podcast. Thank you so much for listening. That is incredibly kind. I have incredible fondness for those madhouse sessions. When David goes away. And I have full reign across the dungeon. Those are just entirely too much fun. Mostly telling jokes about Atticus Jackson's calves. 
it's so incredibly kind of you to listen. So this doesn't necessarily seem to be a long one. I just need 30 minutes, so any time I talk to someone or investigate something, time will pass. Come back at 1800 hours. I mean, while we're here. <sighs> I should probably talk to the person on the boat. In terms of union busting information, which I will use against them, I hope. And then there's a bunch of people involved in the protest out here that I can speak to. That should get me clear through to 18. So, we have, a, we have a plan. Very close to getting the body down. I'm assuming that volumetric compressor will help deeply. I love the fact that I still have no idea what I look like. It makes me so happy. <laughs> so, I will return as soon as possible and speak to people for a half an hour and then maybe, maybe we can get the body down and start our proper investigation next time. Thank you for hanging on a little bit longer with me this time around. We have a fashionable new jacket. We know more about the world than ever before. And we have some money. We're really, we're really starting to piece it together. I appreciate your time greatly. I hope that it is a wonderful rest of the day for you, for you all. See you soonish. I mean, the whole crew hanging out was just brilliant. Incredibly wholesome. And your chemistry is great, too. Aww. I love the fact that we're able to piece together any kind of chemistry from our respective closets across the world. But it's easy with such kind folk. You laughed when I was like, keep your shirt on. That's how they get you. <laughs> I'm so glad you're listening to that. That's one of my favorite, favorite things I've ever done. Incredibly kind of you to spend your time on it. But that's how they always get in. Yeah. <laughs> Many thanks for your time. I will see you guys soonish for more corpsified fun. Bye for now.